I love playing games and rolling dice, but I don't love when the dice roll off the table or they're making too much noise over Discord. So today, I'm making a customized dice tray. So here's what I'm gonna be using to build this dice tray. I got a wooden box. Actually, I got all this stuff from the art supply store. I'll be using this cheap spray paint primer, but any sort of paint primer to go over the wood box is good. Gonna need something to decorate the box with. I'm gonna be using these Posca paint pens. Gonna need a water-based spray varnish. I'm using one with a matte finish just to protect everything. You know, gonna be rolling a bunch of dice, wanna protect the artwork. Gonna need some scissors and a ruler. I have, I have a metal rainbow one. I'll be cutting out a piece of this quarter inch felt as the rolling surface, and then using this super glue gel to glue it into the box. Now, just in case I'll have links to all this stuff or similar versions down in the description, but if you can, it would be much cooler to go to your local art supply store and get a bunch of this stuff from them. Okay, first step is to prime this five by eight inch wooden box. I'm just using a simple white primer because I'm gonna be drawing right on top of it. And I will say this cheap wood box is gonna take multiple coats of primer. Something about this raw wood just soaks up the spray paint and it's hard to get a full coverage. Maybe I should have used a paintbrush or a roller with some actual paint to get a nice solid coating on top of this box. But I think in the end, it's all gonna get covered up by drawing. So the spray paint's gonna work just fine. So speaking of drawing, I'm gonna be drawing drawing a dungeon on this box. I want to roll my dice into a dungeon map. And to draw a good dungeon map, you need a grid. So that's what I'm going to start with, drawing a grid. So I'm just marking the grid out with a ruler and a pencil. I've measured the edge of the box as like three eighths of an inch. So I think that's what my grid size is going to be. I'm using this clear ruler to measure out the grid. It's a little bit easier because you can line it up and keep things square as you go. Now, because I'm going to be drawing over this grid with a light blue Posca pen, I'm actually using a non-photo blue mechanical pencil to draw this grid in for First, I think it's easier to measure stuff out with pencil and then draw over top of it with the paint pen after because if you try and use a paint pen against a ruler, it's really easy to smudge. And also, I want the blue grid lines to be sort of freehand. I, I want them to be measured out in an actual grid, but I, I like it to be a little freehand, kind of like the mural I have in the background here. So yeah, these blue Posca pens work great over the primer, but I guess I probably should have sanded the wood down at the very beginning before I primed it. There's a few little jagged edges here and there, but it's not a big deal. I'm trying to be careful, but not too precious with this grid drawing. And I personally really like the kind of wobbly hand-drawn look. You know, it has, it has character to it. It's not just a strict, straight, super rigid grid. And I just love how a white and light blue grid looks. It's like, one of my all time favorite patterns. And I kind of just want to keep the box, just the grid, because I think it looks so clean and nice. But the concept of rolling dice into a dungeon map is just too good to pass up. So I'm gonna draw a dungeon on top of this grid. Using a black Posca pen, I'm just following the grid like I would a normal sheet of paper, but in 3D and drawing the dungeon walls. I'm kind of just going for it, winging it, not really having a plan for what this dungeon is actually supposed to look like or anything. As I'm drawing this thing, it's kind of hard to tell where the filled in areas go versus where the grid should just be in the open. So I'm putting these dashes or X's everywhere so I know where to fill in afterwards. You know, I really don't wanna accidentally fill in an area and then get trapped inside this dungeon. Something I've also noticed that I didn't really think about beforehand, there's not a lot of room for big rooms. So this is gonna be a cramped and tight dungeon with narrow winding hallways, but I'm trying to keep everything uniform by not having more than like two spaces in between the open areas, two like filled in spaces in between the open areas. And I think that just makes a, a good balance of wall versus open space and also filled in black versus white and blue grid. Now, I'm not worrying at all about the inside bottom area of the box. That's gonna get covered up by felt. And after cleaning up a few spots here and there, adding another coat where it needs it, 
the drawing of this dice tray is done. Now, because I'm actually gonna be using this dice tray, I don't want the design to get scratched or scuffed off from all the dice I'm gonna be rolling in this thing. So hitting it with a few coats of this varnish is really gonna protect it. I think I'll even be able to throw this in my bag without having to worry about it getting marked up or dinged in any way. So the matte finish looks really good. You can't tell that there's really any sort of varnish over top of it. It feels a little bit smoother, but it's still nice and bright white, nice bright light blue, and the black looks good and solid. So now let's do something about the actual tray. Can't be rolling straight on top of this wood. It'll be super loud. It'll be worse than rolling on the table. Now originally I thought I was just going to stick a sheet of felt down in there, but I also found this quarter of an inch, maybe it's not even quarter of an inch foam. And I thought this would be the perfect stuff to lay down first and then help dampen some of that dice rolling sound. You know, you'll still be able to hear the rolling, but it won't be so aggressive. So I'm going to start by measuring the inside of the box. Good thing I did because it's not actually five by eight. It's like five and five sixteenths by eight and one sixteenth of an inch. So I'm making the measurements on the foam and then I'm using the metal ruler and a hobby knife, which cuts through this foam super easily. A little bit easier than scissors, I'd say. I'm just gonna make sure it fits in the box, trim a little bit extra off if it needs it, and then it's time to glue this sucker into the tray. So I'm using this gel super glue. It's a little bit thicker than the normal stuff, so it won't make as much of a mess. Sometimes regular super glue is kind of runny and can get all over the place. This stuff kind of sticks where you put it. So I'm just making a a glue grid in the bottom of my tray and then slapping this foam right on top. And I gotta say, I love how this blue foam looks in the bottom of the dice tray, but I'm also worried that the foam is gonna get dented over time, especially if I'm throwing this thing in my bag. And if, if I roll metal dice into this tray, like this foam is gonna get destroyed. So I am going to measure and cut out some felt. I think that'll last longer and it'll dampen the sound even more. Again, just measuring with the ruler and using a white Posca marker to mark where I need to make the cut. Now, a hobby knife totally does not work on felt, so I gotta use scissors, and it really helps if you have a nice, sharp pair of scissors. And it's really worth taking the time cutting out this felt to get a, a straight of a line as you can because you want it to fit in the tray all nice. So with a good clean cut, the felt fits perfectly into the tray, but I'm hesitating to glue it in just because I love the way the blue foam looks. I really can't decide which one I like better. Let me know down in the comments which one you think looks better, but also will will be better in the long run. The last thing I did was cut out a couple of squares of felt and just glued them straight onto the bottom of this thing just for a little bit more of a sound dampening effect. And I really couldn't be happier with how this dungeon map dice tray turned out. <laughs> no way, dude. <laughs> I'm excited I got it all finished just in time for my first game of Monster of the Week. I'll let you know how that goes in future videos. Let me know what you think of the tray down in the comments. If you'd like to support the channel, I have a Patreon and an online store. I release monthly tabletop role-playing game adventures and guidebooks. Check out those links down in the description. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!